The selectmen meetings are subject to being videotaped. Your image and voice may be recorded. All right, we have Mary, can I request an appointment at 7.15. Mm -hmm. Judy, would you entertain a question before you get going? Sure. Sure. So, you know, cable access is now recording the meetings, mm -hmm. and we're finding that it's pretty easy to get them up onto YouTube at basically no cost but our time. So we'd like your permission to put these meetings on YouTube and put links to them either from the cable access webpage, from the selectmen's webpage, or both. And I mean I think that's a great idea because yeah. there's a lot of people that don't have cable. I could watch them, for instance. Yes. <laughs> no cable or have dish or have well, just use the internet. Anything that lets more sunshine and more people see what's going on in government is a good can, idea. Can you, know, can you talk to um, Garth? Garth. Yeah, and, we've already done. And, well, and see where he thinks it would be a good place to put him. I mean, yeah. We, we had a meeting together and we've kind of got some ideas basically like we just discussed. Excellent. So we'll have a YouTube channel for cable access. We'll have underneath there are folders for selectmen meetings other things and uh, we'll put links to the selectmen meetings from the selectmen's page is that seems like a the place somebody normally go to look so yeah yeah, yeah. okay great thank you all right we don't have any this is the work we don't have any minutes no for approval We have a bill schedule for the 1870 Town Hall for $30.34 for Sassafras Ale. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What is Sassafras Ale? Simple Green Sassafras oh, Ale. Okay. <laughs> it's cleaning solution. Cleaning solution. All right, I just, you know. <laughs> I wonder suppose why they you were going to try to drink it here. Like why, why did it say sassafras? I don't know. Oh, it's a okay. brander. Um, we have a request from the Berlin Fire Company. They were going to have a car wash this past Saturday, and it rained, so now they're going to have the car wash this coming Saturday, and they would like approval. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. We have. Uh, now I have a question on this. So we we got a recommendation from the uh, insurance advisory committee, but I thought it was kind of vague. They said, "Is it in here?" Uh, yes, right underneath those pages. David said that he never really felt he got feedback from all town employees because he felt that there was never a voice spoken for the highway. But nonetheless, the two unions have pulled their constituents and came back with a vote. So they voted for Blue Shield Dental Blue 2, which is whoops, this plan. Uh, Dental Blue Program 2 is actually level 3, which is confusing, which is fine, but I don't understand it says at, with no additional cost to employees it, because it is more expensive I think it was supposed to be five dollars more it's um, the Blue Cross Blue Shield was 3589 and the level blue two level three is 4155 and what did we pay? Two, three quarters of that? Fifty percent. Fifty percent of that. So what they... Now it's still cheaper than what they had before with the Delta Dental, which was um, 52.52. So at no additional cost means no additional cost compared well, this, to current coverage? or I don't know. That's okay. what I don't know. Because it is more That's than their current coverage. It's five dollars more, but they get the the crowns and so it's five dollars more than current. 
but it's still less than what they had two years ago, which was the Delta Dental. Okay. okay. So I think we need to clarify. Okay, I see what they're saying. I think what they're saying is that they, I think what their recommendation is, uh, is that they would like us to pick up a bit more than 50% in order to keep the employee costs the same, but we should clarify that that's what they mean. Yes. Um, so this, Dennis had always given me two forms. I always gave me that one on the top of the yellow. Well, this has the dental plan at 3532. I asked us to clarify. If that you know, is two forms or not. And that looks like the old dental plan. Dennis? It doesn't even match the, the, the well, it went up 1.6%. So what is, um, what's 3532 times 1.6? Excuse it me. It sounds like it would be pretty close to 3589. So I think this is, this is the old one with the. 35, oh, 3532 times. Times 1.06. Yeah. Why is this doing this? One point oh six thirty seven forty four rounding up. Okay. Um, hmm. None of these numbers match any of these numbers. So I know we need to get this signed. It needs to be in by May first, but by May first. Um if and by the unions we mean the teachers union and the police union? Oh. Is that right? There, the, the teachers union was there, the police union was there, mm -hmm. um, Denny was there representing retirees, mm -hmm. um, and Eloise. Eloise was there and as Melinda. general government, mm -hmm. and Melinda, and Melinda Rollins was there. Okay. So well, I mean I think you know the union everybody agreed I just not sure what this paperwork is and um, so, but, but the cost of what they recommended is 40 41 55 for an individual and 85 61 for a family and the town pays half the cost so if if you give me approval to sign this maybe tomorrow today's the 28th we have two days to sign a proposal um, I'll give you permission you but, um, on the thing that you look in what you feel that it's um, justified and, and it makes it's sense. The, it's the same plan that they had the year before mm -hmm. and then they switched to this other one which was supposed to be the same plan but it wasn't mm -hmm. and then we had a whole bunch of issues because it wasn't offering mm -hmm. what they thought so all this does is take it back to where they were. So do you feel comfortable with it, period, right now? Yeah. Including uncomfortable. Well, uncomfortable except for the wording in his his Gee, email. Would it be helpful if Dave were here? He's working right now. You want me to have him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be that'd be great. Yeah, so when I'm table until. Yeah, let's wait until Dave right. comes. All right. Um. 7.15, we have River Bridge. <coughs> Would you like to come up? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Nice to see you over here. Nice to see you. Nice to be seen. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could look right into the camera if you want to be seen more. There you go. <laughs> Okay. I'm just here with my kind of monthly update okay. that we can provide to you and the uh, planning board. And uh, in this case, we also send a monthly update to MassWorks and the various uh, departments. Uh, so it's a part of our River Bridge team that has been working in getting her, that proposal ready. Okay. So uh, 
Keith has been very involved. Christopher suggested that I bring a copy of the letter that we're forwarding from Waterman Design, our site engineer, and from Dave Capel, our engineering uh, road uh, team members who are doing all the work, getting it ready so that when uh, we get the opportunity to hit the bid button, we can just hit a button. Okay. But we've been doing all the work kind of on the come. This is uh, the letter that we're proposing to send out to Victoria uh, tomorrow. Mary, either with this hard copy or because of the copies we send, we'll probably keep a record of these, what we send to her. Last month, the board, although my brother outlined the letter, uh, also sent an update on the town and our coordinated activities moving forward. We are on schedule on every, we're on schedule or ahead of schedule on every one of her uh, talking she spoke with Christopher about a week ago and said she was very pleased with how uh, our financing and our, <coughs> uh, our coordination with our builder is going. She will be getting a three-page report from the <coughs> builder on the cost and the, uh, the timetable of the ports of the town. It will also highlight the first two foundations and the 84 units and try to pull us away from that occasion. We keep pulling them right back to it. Uh, I don't go into a what know. do you mean by? Well, Victor, or the, it, the, the mass work says talking about all 205 is if it, it's one, it's, it's two. Gotcha. It's 84 and 120. Gotcha, gotcha. And I, gotcha. We, we stand by that pretty hard. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's fine. I we just push back. That's mm -hmm. the only thing we push back on a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when you say 84 and the other 100 and something, you're not going to like segregate all of the low income in one 84 units. Yeah, but 84 okay. units we built in two or three buildings. Right, right. It's not going to be one building of all low. No. No. It'll be spread out. The 21 000. units will be spread out over 84 units, right. which will only be, you know, 30 percent of all of the units right. that I will eventually build. And, it's, plan, yeah. and it says 84 that count toward our affordable housing quota. That is correct. Mm -hmm. I should. Although I think we've kind of shared. We have visual. We would like to see. It. We have it visually drawn out. Uh, we've shared it with anybody who's come into our mm -hmm. offices, and I could have brought a copy of it today. Just went down in the class. It's cool. It's kind of tipped up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I check with him all the time. Keep no, that's right. I mean, I think. So, are you keeping him in check? Yes. Okay. Well, he's also keeping what are designed, David Capel, mm -hmm. our team members in check. Mm -hmm. He has what he's doing. Yeah. And he's doing a good no job. letter from the selectman this time. Yes. Oh, uh, there is we, one because no, I. No, we didn't. We didn't. Christopher. Christopher didn't want to be presumptuous this time. Oh. They thought you, under supervision of somebody in this room, would like to write a letter. No, I thought you were going to suggest the wording, only because I, I was talking to Keith today about this, that I'm not really involved in it anymore, which is fine. Do you feel comfortable telling me what the letter should say from the town side? Yes. Okay. Um, this time. But I do have some interjection on that. Now that I have read the letter from Victoria, saying that this thing is really going to happen sooner than later. And I said I would keep it in check like you've asked me to do. But now it comes on somebody else. This is happening very fast, very quickly. I think now, I'm not sure how we go about it, but somebody needs to be the clerk of the works. Now, I'm going to say that the town needs to hire somebody because I can't be there 24-7. I did a three-hour meeting with the engineers last week, which is fine. I have no problem. But it's going to get more detailed. There's going to be more questions. Somebody's going to have to be around, <coughs> and I'd like to see somebody around. When this does happen, we're talking about breaking ground this year sometime. Um, and it's been my concern the whole time, when I talked to the engineers in the beginning, that you need to have somebody that's watching over the job. Can't be me, can't be Mary, can't be Karen. It has to be somebody, because when you, this is, this, um, this grant thing is fairly good. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know that even the board can tell us how to go about, but to make sure that it gets done properly, I want I want somebody to answer to me every day. I need to swing by every day, but I need somebody there eight hours a day to make sure that they put the pipe in the ground properly. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even in this in this beginning stage, it's like the letter that they're looking for now. What that's do? that's common sense. That's got to be done absolutely. Right. Usually, but, but now, I, all I'm saying is, yeah, we need that, but. 
Yeah. 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 Who's going to do it? Who's going to pay? Well, a lot Who's of times the grants will give you 10% for well, the grants I've worked on. 10% for like overhead or some kind of help that you need with it. I don't know if that grant has that. The administration of it yeah. is 10%. Again, that's I, well, you need to check that and see if that's the same for this grant. Do you have a reaction to that? No, David. Uh, we, we, we're encouraged by it, sure. Uh, it should come out of the million five mm -hmm. and change. And the Capel Engineering Associates have sent me an email, you know, kind of lobbying for that type of responsibility. Um, you know, after this thing goes to bid, they would like to be kind of coming back and looking at their, their roadwork and making sure it's being done and they want to be compensated for it. I don't think they envision being there eight hours a day. It's kind of a little bit like the Army, hurry up and wait. Uh, but, you know, there'd be somebody that would be responsible, you know, on the premise. Because, again, the invoices have to be checked off by the town of Berlin if we're going to get paid. Yes, of course. So, and, and I will certainly sign that off, but I need somebody to, to know that that <coughs> piece of pipe went in. They can <coughs> skip one piece of pipe. Right, right. right. That's right. all I'm saying. Somebody right. Needs to be there quite a bit of the time. It does a number of jobs, like over Hosmer Street in Marlboro, and the city of Marlboro has an inspector on site on the all the time we're working. You know? Well, the city's important. And again, in Marlboro, they have these inspectors that are getting 40 hours a week, so you can just adjust them to that job for the week. We don't have that. I know. We're going to have the so yeah. we, don't, okay. we don't have an engineering department. But, yeah, but what I'm hearing is that you. We could probably pay Mr. Chappelle to hire somebody. Yes, that's confident. And, and we will. To me. Yes, we will. We will coordinate that effort. We have it. We actually. I got the email five days ago. I said, "Give me a week just to digest it." Um, and, and you anticipate that with the funding and the grant and so on, but that that can be accomplished without additional cost to the town having a clerk of works. I think you're right. Except for if you hire somebody. I was asking like right you now. Actually. Okay. Yeah, just. I just. Okay. okay. Because uh, I'm looking for a commitment, it's not going to cost us anything more. And then uh, my understanding, <laughs> my, my, under, my understanding is that we, if we came in over budget, mm -hmm. the delta would be paid for by room. Mm -hmm. If this whole thing cost one seven, mm -hmm. the delta would be mm -hmm. our responsibility, mm -hmm. and not the town's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that's nobody's told me different. Okay. I mean, I've, I've got a, you know, and we've had conversations with with people about being on budget. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're not building the Taj Mahal down here. No, I no, understand no, that, no, but I need I need somebody soon. Right. Okay, because even this letter right now, I'm I never, I'm not the person to write that letter. Neither is Mary. Right. Nobody but has Chris's to write that. Chris's last email was very dense with all these things are starting to pop. And I said to Keith, I said, do you feel? Chris will write the letter tomorrow morning for No, I understand that, but to represent the town's interest, though, because we're the recipient of the grant. That's where it started with Keith and I talking about, you were asking for a monthly letter. And I looked at him and said, do you feel like you're ready to write a monthly and, letter? And, and this monthly letter is an indication of progress. Is that correct. correct? Okay. And it's backed up by documentation. Mm -hmm. okay. In other she's going to get it. She's got a letter from. She's going to get a letter from you. I never got that, so that's fine. You're giving it now, but and yeah. at the current time, we're not talking about somebody inspecting something that's been done. Correct. We're just talking about steps that you've taken in terms of financing. And, and who's going to fund the person that I'm looking for? That's what I want. To know. Well, I think we we just talked about that. Well, so it sounds like it's going to come in the back door when the grant is actually approved. See, that's the problem. Yeah, we'll, right. If he needs someone before the grant yeah, gets approved, then we, we can't. If we, if we open ground June 30th, we don't have anybody in place. Because you can't hire somebody without any money. I don't think, well, I would go. Well, when do you think this grant is going to get approved? Because I don't see that we're going to break ground until yeah. we have a signed, sealed, approved grant. Well, yeah, we can, and we can. Um, you want me to read the, This is from Victoria. I wanted to check to see how the progress is coming along on the River Bridge project. Please let me know when you're ready to have a meeting or call. It takes a couple of weeks to get the contract issued based on the town's need to input additional information to the system, which is a packet that we got, to review and process the information. So it would be great to have an update on the timing so that we can stop the contract. So Victoria is ready to stop the contract. Well, once we get a contract. Because she's pretty happy with what these gentlemen have done. You get what I'm saying? Because it's, it's getting close. Okay. Well, we got a number of trains 
running here, so let's try to sure do it. one at a time. First of all, we only have so many minutes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. First of all, we have an interim letter that largely talks about financing and so on that you guys are doing. And Chris is going to put together a letter of representation or whatever to us indicating what's happened and documentary support for that. Is that correct? We were not. Oh, you were we not. Were giving you, we were giving you letters from all the people that have done the work. Okay. And last time I think we did put together a letter and this time we said they might want to just be a little bit more involved in that letter. I think maybe we misgaged that if I had to. Uh, I think our secretary is quite. Well, it's not that I can't messy. read the letter, but it's like I'm representing for the board in a letter for you to sign their representations. Yeah. I think but it would be, for me, I think it would be helpful if you at least gave us a checklist and outline of the things that needed to be covered because then you know, sort of a, sure. a representative list. Because then I think looking at this and looking at your list, we could we could we could put together a letter and make an assessment whether we had sufficient, you know, documentation to support what we're saying. And I don't mind taking a quick a look at, at that, seeing if uh, you know, and then reporting back to the board to see if all of that adds up and I'm happy to sit down with you and review it if you like to. Okay, so just to keep things going quicker than what's I'm hearing, okay? This this is all that we need right now because we need a letter to go out tomorrow to Victoria. And this is all this is all we're asking for. Another letter on Berlin stationery from either Keith or Mary indicating that the town has been involved with the river bridge is making progress and is comfortable with the plans and the strategies as they are being developed. This is also a pretty similar letter, but very important since the grant awardee is also mm -hmm. the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it's really just, I need to say, yeah, I met with him. So it's one day. or two sentences. That's right. all. That's oh, okay. it. Okay. Right. Right, right now, because I spent three hours with the two engineers, and I go and meet with him every week to make sure that things are up and up. That's that's all we're looking for right, right now. I think that's why Chris didn't write a letter. He really <coughs> sees this as right. a two or three okay. sentence that's letter. Cool. Okay. Saying, I've yeah, got no, all no, these documents. Fine. fine. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, that's done. Uh, yes. Well. Well, on the basis of these things and your conversations, are you comfortable with us issuing that letter? Cool. I'm very cool. That's okay. why I asked. Then it's getting time to t then think about hiring somebody. So, yes, a couple of lines saying... So it just references yes. the, mm -hmm. the project, saying we are in continuing contact with yes. the proponents of the mm -hmm. project, and we are thus far satisfied Correct. with the progress. That's what we need. Yep. That's it. Perfect right now. Did you get that? write those two sentences for you and you can sign it tomorrow. <laughs> That's perfect. All right. On highway stationery or No, no, put it on selectman. 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 But signed by Keith on high on selectman secretary on station uh, selectman. Uh, I can come in tomorrow yep. and sign it. It would be better so if you gonna, signed it. I don't have any authority. I'm just I mean if you want the secretary to do it, I will do that. Yeah, I mean I think those couple sentences if yep. we're relying on that. Me to sign. No. Judy to sign. Judy can sign. Got it. Yeah. You you're willing to come in, right? Yep. Yeah. I can okay. come in anyway. Well, you okay. Can you can designate. So that's one want. thing. You can designate make me if you want me to sign it. I will. I don't care. These are signing checks, you know. Uh -huh. I'm, loving, I'm loving me. All right. So yeah, that yeah. was All one right. piece. Okay. Next piece was you want to hire someone before the project. I, I want you to know that uh -huh. we Riverbridge are going to be hiring somebody somehow. We're going to work together and figure out what the best way is. As long mm -hmm. as you guys are on board, you understand that we have to hire somebody because me and Mary and Karen are not going to, Kathy are not going to be able mm -hmm. to right and, and I just want to be sure that you, if you're going to be spending money, it should be MassWorks money, not town money. Okay, but how do you get the MassWorks money until the end of it? That's the problem. See, so well, you can, and, and you can check with June. It's a grant. Mm -hmm. It's guaranteed by the state. So you so can I spend can, before you get the money back. Just like Chapter 90? Yes, it okay. is. It's like Green Communities money. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. My only other question is, is... But you have to uh, have a signed contract. I understand that. that. That's, that's going to happen soon. My a signed thing. contract. From the state. state. Right. Okay, so my other question is if, if it's some, all right, I think you did say that. Because if we don't get reimbursed, we might hire somebody next month say we don't get reimbursed because we went over or not the same, then you are responsible. My, I guess my, the back of my mind says River, River Road is just fine. The only reason we're even doing this is because we need to slow traffic down for his development. Am I correct? To assume that? Is that where we're at? 
Well, oh, you yeah, mass grants. I think it was traffic calming and right. because we didn't Even want if his and patterns wasn't control. Going down. If his, no, if no, his, if obviously it, if this that was still, you know, Reese's Corner and there was nothing, then we wouldn't have to do anything. Okay. But there was Somebody a site plan. Have to do it. There was a site plan approved. It was and we all with, agreed to it. So mm -hmm. now we have to do it. Okay. That's yep. what I wanted to know. Yeah. Okay. So then we're going to have to hire somebody, eat the money up front, and hope that we can get reimbursed at the end if we're not. And my understanding, the development money. agreement requires you to bear. <coughs> the, 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 the development agreement requires you to bear those costs before we even got into the grant. Yeah, even yeah, before we yeah. got into the grant. Absolutely. So we already have an yeah. agreement. The road costs were his to begin yeah. with. He's yeah. just got a grant now right. that's going to cover and, a million And so million. if, we, if we the grant doesn't cover it all, we, we revert to the terms of the development agreement. And the terms of the development agreement says River Bridge picks it up. So therefore, even if he you know, goes the grant, he has to do it. He's going to break the right. grant. That's what yep. I want to know. That's part of the site plan. And so the he needs to work his butt off to make sure that he gets the grant. Mm -hmm. Thank yep. you. I understand that now. Okay. <laughs> it would seem that that smaller rotary is going to have backups. I disagree. It really? At different times? Only because I keep on watching, and I talked to um, Dave Chappelle, actually his uh, Karen over there, and I says, I like the one at Market Packet. I sit and watch, and it's really busy up there now, and I sit and watch at the one at Washington Street in Hudson. Hudson one is amazing. And, and actually, you had a question about yeah, that. Yeah, it really so is. Yeah. The difference is huge. And it's all Tuxman the lines. Tuxman, yeah. You follow the lines. And believe me, it yeah. moves. Tuxman's good. It moves. Yeah. They all move. Yes. And it, it, it's a, somebody come up with a brilliant idea. I think it should be a Gates Pond Road. <laughs> that would be my next suggestion. Okay. We're, we're going to talk, we're we're gonna, talk about that and, <laughs> and talk to the state about that. <laughs> all right. All right. So, yeah. And you asked right. about slowing down. I don't believe it. Okay. Okay. I, think it I think it'll move. So, good. okay. So, Is that letters it? done. Like hiring done. issues under done. control I'm under control I mean no, we know where we're going with yeah. that okay. anything else we're very comfortable with everything we're on pace we have four different components going on down there mm -hmm. and they're all on it's a schedule right now. when is and the hotel going to start they want to have a foundation in before the snow you know they're they they plan on building all winter. The next snow could be next week. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. Not, not that snow. Uh, no, next we're, year's snow. We're, 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 uh, is that going to give? Is that going to give Dunkin' Donuts some more parking there? <laughs> yeah, there'll be 200 spots there. Okay. At eight o'clock on, you know, when all the men go, men and women go off to work in the morning. But yeah, there'll be plenty of parking at that point. And, uh, they stopped talking to me about drive throughs for once. So. Okay. <laughs> it is a drive through you wouldn't have to worry about parking. That's yeah. right. right. And just now the four components I can go are... I my pajamas. I know. The hotel, <laughs> mm -hmm. the road, the water, and the apartments. Okay. Great. And all, all four right. of them are on schedule. Great. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. If that's thank it. You. Thank, thank you. you very much for coming in. All right. <laughs> We're going to go. All right. Okay. It's the man in charge of insurance. I, I want to I want to say that on television. Yeah, no, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna get you a uh, uh, we're gonna get you a gecko as a, as a, uh, a thank you for doing this work. Okay. Okay. So my understanding is that you want this plan. The, the, the majority of the group has agreed to that. Which, Those which, have responded. Which, which is really going back to what you had before. Originally. Right. And, and then belief from the original meeting is that what was the town was originally believed they were getting. It was a change behind the scenes. No fault of the town, the treasurer, or the benefit people. It was changed from uh, MIAA and uh, Blue Cross and Shield. Okay. And that was the... So my question is, you say with no additional cost to employees, where my understanding is the one that we have now would have been thirty-five eighty-nine for an individual, and going to level three, it would be forty-one fifty-five. Correct, and and that's understood. It's no additional upfront costs, enrollment costs, no hidden costs, no so fees. So it's understood. That they understand okay. that there's going to be a, a, a percentage increase that was projected okay. even under the other plan of one point six percent. So. They're aware that the, the people that attended and paid attention are aware that obviously there's going to be a cost, but the package uh, far outweighs. The benefit is part of the cost. So 50% of the, everybody understands is 50% of that slightly, somewhat increased, what, $5? $5. Or so $5. Or 
right? Yes. Okay. That, that was what was confusing us because the recommendation said no additional costs to the employees, and we were thinking, but yeah, we're, 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 we're paying 50%. And, and, and I agree, and, and, and okay. I thought that over at the original meeting that when it was brought up that said we can go to that plan, which originally was supposed to be in place, and it just was a, a, a something happened, and the employees uh, okay. bought onto that. So that's the only thing. That, as there would have been a projected increase anyway, anyway of 1.6%, uh, about two point seven dollars if they stayed with the original plan that it switched to. Mm -hmm. okay. So and and you indicated a, a, a majority. How I mean, was it uh, was it pretty uncontentious? Well, there's, it, there's, I can tell you there's twenty two or twenty five bargaining members in the teachers union, mm -hmm. and then the we have a seventeen. But how many benefited ones are? You know, mm -hmm. I only pulled the benefited ones and asked some of the others of potentials. Mm -hmm. And then the dispatchers uh, were a majority in agreement. Mm -hmm. There's still some questions. It's all new to them. And then I reached <coughs> out to a couple others, but we're, we don't have information, though. I have solicited the DPW workers to get involved and that would benefit them to participate. And I don't think they're really fully comprehended yet. So, yeah, as I said in the email, this is around we're this in our infancy. We yeah. wanted to clarify the rules. Yeah. Thank you for the response from Mary, from the AGs, and all the other stuff about where we can do and what we can pull. Yeah. We will be much more open and understanding as we go forward with just a, a basic meeting to make recommendations. And that's all we're doing, uh, just to clarify, although there's been emails back and forth. We are just to review the benefits that are being offered by the town and Absolutely. make recommendations for consideration. And, and we thank you for that time. And, uh, okay, that's okay, great. great. That's right. great. And yeah, I mean, it seemed like there's people were maybe struggling a little bit to understand a new situation, but basically agreeable. Is that right? It's um, agreeable, but there's still a learning curve. Yeah. And um, the, the treasurer still answers questions regarding that, and I hope he continues to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because he is very well versed in the different things, and we will be inviting. MIAA. It was not enough time to get them to schedule right, in and right. do a presentation. So even though I appeared under the gun, no pun, um, <laughs> it was, you know, I didn't know I had to be sworn in either before we took action. Oh, yeah. So there, you um, go. there was a lot of things that happened and then we clarified the open meeting law. We've reached out to MIAA and they will put on a full presentation in the early summer that meets the schedule of somebody else's and we'll invite you to attend if you can just to uh, you know guide us and, and Dennis too even though he's not involved but we'd like him to just be there because he brings his abacus and his calculator absolutely all right well thank you Great. for taking right. time with that yeah oh, thank you yeah all right appreciate all right. it thanks not bad huh? <laughs> all right I was given the I'm impressed all right don't believe everything <laughs> you hear right. all right right here for 41.55 I figured out that the I was looking at the current yes. rates and I should have been looking at the renewal. Okay. So yeah, do I, I hear a motion to approve I, yes. the, the uh, uh, dental option recommended by the insurance advisory committee? committee. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. Thank, Thank you. Can. Thank you. Spread the joy. Good time. 428. All right. So one of these Just isn't one. signed. Yeah. This one was if they stayed with the. Okay. So it's just the one that's gotcha. signed. Okay. Okay. I'll get that out. Yeah. All right. Why are you expecting? We have a review of the draft wiring inspector job description. So I emailed that and I had questions. That I think in the back of it. Yeah. Well, I didn't see it. Did you email it out? If well, I originally emailed out one without it attached, oh, and okay. then I emailed the second one huh. out, but okay. it wasn't until. I didn't see it. Yeah. Yeah. it was this afternoon. Right? This afternoon. Yeah, I yeah. didn't have a chance to, uh, to, to read it yet. Well, so here are some of the questions as I was writing it up. Just things to think about. How will they be paid? Is it going to be a percentage of the fee or a salary or some hybrid? Do you want to require regular office hours? Do you want to require that they have to use the permitting software? Um, do you want to put in that they have to write regular reports? Do you want to put in something about they have to meet with the building inspector weekly or keep him somehow updated on projects? And how much education do you want? 
Mary, I mean, Mary gave me four, and I had two descriptions. So you got six you put together there. I kind of looked through them all and just picked, I mean, a lot of it's all the same. Yeah. The town of Lexington had an advertisement for one, and they were paying an hourly rate of $28.95 to $34 with benefits. This was in January. And it's pretty much, I mean, pretty much the same <coughs> stuff that we have. Um, they paid an hourly rate, not a percentage of fees. That's what, yes, mm -hmm. they're saying an hourly rate. I mean, my guess my suggestion is is that maybe we could have Mary call up some towns and find out how they pay them. Very good. I tried to find it through some town reports, but it's just all buried in there. Yeah, that'd be good. Just call the building departments and ask them what they'll know. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, um, you can read. And I will. I, um, yeah, I'd rather, I, I mean. Read it and we could talk about it next week again. Um, Maybe in two weeks oh, because oh. It, that we only yeah. have the short meeting next week before a town meeting. Can we chalk that up for the 12th? Yeah, it's fine. Is yeah. that okay with you, Walter? Yeah. Because yeah. we only have like. Right, and that gives right her that gives her two weeks to call people and see, or just you have a whole group you can send an email to, right? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. There has been some interest in it around town, different people. Number six, reappointment of the fire engineers for a one-year term. I don't know, do we have paper on that? A letter that would go to, yep. Yeah. So the appointments would be Duncan Baum, James Pelletier, George Pendergast, Bruce Ricard, Donald Richard, and Robert Turbo. Okay. Which is the same group that's in there right now. Do okay. I hear a motion? I move to approve. Do I hear a second? Well, I second it, but just for a discussion. And then, yeah. yeah. Yeah, again, I mean, going, I've looked back at the minutes, and since time immemorial, the new Board of Selectmen, which could be the old Board of Selectmen, make all appointments for their time in office, and uh, this seems like a deviation from that. Um, but, uh, I'm not sure what the motive behind it is. Well, uh, I mean, I got, right. uh, someone gave me the state law for appointing the board of fire engineers so you've never heard ever before someone come in here and, and uh, want to have it appointed I, in april I, and then turn I, it down i i told you that i i think i remember that when you know in that we used to do the fire engineers separately and before we did the other appointments um, I could call Peggy and check on that, but that's what I remember. Peggy was in here today looking. And mm -hmm. through the minutes, and it, it hadn't occurred. Mm. I could swear that we did a couple of yeah. took chunks some of those years, but uh, it. Uh, well, does it really make any difference if, if you know now what the law is? Do you want to break it? I mean, my, my own sense is if that is what the law is, we we should appoint. Uh, we are going should to actually un say that in front of the police chief. Felt <laughs> that he would. <laughs> um, I you know I point out that over the course of this next year, um, we are undertaking um, a study of public safety and its reorganization. Um, I think continuing things one more year, we're undoubtedly going to be appointing an advisory board to work with the consultant on that. And I think that there'll be, you know, there'll be lots of opportunity for multiple voices on that. And it, this really doesn't make that much difference. Yeah, it doesn't really. No, it's just a little strange. That's all. Let's vote on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, continued discussion of proposed rescue squad policy regarding billing of town employees. I did forward all of yours. Mary asked for town council to give us a ruling on this in January. 
and I sent an email out. To oh, this is different, actually. Oh, is it? Yeah, this is, um, and Dennis did answer, and it's in there. Sorry about that. Um, this is just how employees are billed when they are give, given a transport when they're, it's a comp claim. And so Dennis is, um, you were going to rework that language because Dennis's language. I didn't get to that. Okay. I will do that. that yep, week. yep, I will. Well, maybe you can read. <laughs> Work something. Yeah, like that it. was. Yeah, that's different. So that was. Um, I I will rework okay. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you want it next week? Um, I'll, what I'll do is I'll I'll present it next week, and we'll, why don't we Vote consider it, it on the twelfth? Because then you know people will at least have it for okay. a week and see it. Do you have a copy? I do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the mosquito control budget. Walter, you had questions about it. Are your questions I, uh, answered? Yeah, they were emailed around. I, I got your email, Mary. And I guess it's um, worthwhile doing. We might as well stick with it. Okay, then do I hear a motion of declaration of support of mosquito control funding for FY15? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I blank, the Chief Executive Officer of blank, hereby designate blank to sign this declaration. <laughs> I'll, that, I'll designate Walter be, to sign well, yeah. it. <laughs> that would be you. No, the Chief Executive Officer, Chairman of the Board of Selectors. That's Chairman of the Board of Selectors. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're, you're going to have to condemn the mosquitoes. Um, executor. Executor. Yeah. Executor. Yeah. You have to sign the execution. I didn't actually have a chance to read it because I was in contract negotiations all the way and then came directly here from work. His question I did see you had sent one, but yeah. I didn't have a chance. It was to just that his question is deeper oh. than CPI. He agrees CPI applies. Okay. How it was calculated in this instance, he thinks is wrong. So I sent an email to you and All right. Dennis I can take a look time. at that because I, from his email, I thought he was just questioning the existence. Whether, right. yeah. yeah, whether it applied or whether it applied right. this year or whatever. So that's what I was, and I think we should still send a letter and you know indicating okay. that. But then we can add a paragraph about. Uh, well, why don't why doesn't he send his calculations and show us what yeah. he think is what the difference? He wants to talk it through with somebody, so he was anxious to talk on the phone. Um, Dennis actually put that invoice together. I just didn't think that Dennis was up to it, but yeah. I, I copied him on the Let email. Let me just take a look because I, again, I didn't. Twenty five thousand dollars off. Yeah. Yeah, too he much. says it's twenty five thousand dollars too much. He thinks CPI was double calculated by being put into the base number and then calculating CPI oh, off yeah. of it, um, but he's not sure. Dennis put together a spreadsheet. Have Dennis talk to him? Yeah, he may not be up to it. Is he not up to it? Maybe he is. I copied him. He God, is he having that bad a recovery? No, I mean, well, he's got one saucy email in there. He must be doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> saucy email. He's back. Oh, he's, he's, <laughs> in, he was in today on crutches. Yeah, oh, really? was he? Yeah. What's that, working. Don? He was in today on crutches for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I mean, if he's uh, certainly if Dennis is um, make a phone call. is up and is up and about, let yeah, him, uh, him let him deal with it. Because again, from the email, I understood it that he was you know, questioning that's the application of, of yeah. CPI, and that's what we answered. So, yeah. okay. So let's see what happens. And 
We have a, to review, did anybody read the letter to HUD and DHCD for Northbrook Village 2? I do not. Do you want to read it? Um, I think you wrote, sign it next week. You praised it. Huh? You praised it. I praised it? Yeah, I think you said that was well written. Not to give myself to oh, yeah. oh, excuse me. I thought it was a return letter back. No, 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 no I read it. No. Yeah, I thought it was good. Short. Yeah. And if you need more details in it, but it was more. Yeah. An emotional plea to start the foreclosure proceedings to yeah. move it along. Yeah, I think that looks good. Okay, should I take a vote? Approval so, of the letter. I move that we approve the letter to be sent to the uh, Hudson DHCD regarding not for village two. Second. All in favor? Aye. And the fundamental substance of it is for them to get on the stick and find another 501c3 organization. Yeah. yeah. Foreclose yeah. it and get moving. Yep. Okay, we have a bill for $49.49 and $49 for stamps that are our secretary purchased. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You can sign that one and sign that one. So we have a vote on the uh, P.O. box to discontinue it. So moved. Second. Um, the Mary writes, if you think it's too soon, do you think you've heard from everybody who might well, be using it? I, I asked a whole bunch of people, and the only one who gave me feedback uh, of concern was Barry to make sure that the bulk permit wasn't tied to the P.O. box. But I checked with the postmaster. It's actually tied to 23 Linden Street. Yep. Okay. And I asked her, is there any other bulk mailing, anything else that you can think of, Heidi? And she didn't, she couldn't come up with anything that would be a concern at their end. So you're going to put a forwarding in once you close it. I can do that. Okay. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll contact our biggest main people and make sure that they're not using 274 anymore. Okay. Okay. Uh, review of the Winter Rapid Recovery Road Program. Mr. That's the pothole thing, and yep. all they need is um, Judy's signature, and then it has to be backed by the by a notary, and then I need to bring it up to Worcester sooner rather than later. Okay. How much did you get done after April, Keith? Did you do I haven't one? got the figure, the full figure yet, but yeah. it's not going to be $29,000. i am going to have to get some new guardrail and stuff. I've, yeah. I've got avenues of trying to get that. Oh, good. Hopefully. I mean, i got to request it, and then they're going to either deny it or not. But right. Mm -hmm. I did almost all my pothole between January and April. Yeah. I think I can also use it for hot tub. So there's other avenues, and I've been talking close with Michael Harrow, which is our District 3 um, man in Worcester. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's going to work with us. And Ellie said that she would verify that tomorrow sometime. Okay, so do I hear a motion to approve signing of the so contractor? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, sorry. That's all right. We can use a soundtrack for oh. on television. <laughs> I think that's all I had. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good evening. You also. regarding town council April 24 email regarding conflict of interest issues and administrative concerns re-selectman candidate Dennis Bartlett now I read this and eh, I didn't think it made it much clearer but I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer we could go over it well I read it several times and I, I'm with you I think you know you asked Brian Riley to write it rather quickly, and which he did. If he went through a couple of iterations, it might have been um, more succinct and clearer. But uh, you know, the bottom line is, it doesn't look like any problem. 
Actually, what it what it says is that um, in order for um, Dennis to maintain his um, the, the paying jobs that report directly to the selectmen will require a vote of the selectmen after mm -hmm. he's elected. Right. Um, that it does not qualify for, um, there are some automatic exceptions that the Commonwealth have, right. and those apply in situations where um, the related jobs are not one that immediately supervises another right. that, um, that he has uh, a financial interest in. Um, it also indicates that um, if the exception is granted, um, the selectman subject to the exception has to recuse themselves from anything that would have an impact on their paid job. Yeah, so in Dennis's case, it would mean that he would have to recuse himself from the consideration of the reorganization of public safety because one of the key elements that's being reviewed there is the um, uh, combination of the fire department and the rescue, which would, in the end, eliminate uh, it would, would eliminate the position that he's being paid for. Um, on that score, just before you get too many, and I can't keep up with them, he's always, always supported combining the rescue squad with the fire department because of other problems. You know, it's a non-issue. Besides that, um, fully expect that they be combined. If, it, if this study doesn't result in that, it's ridiculous. Well, that no, would be one of the results. Let me yeah. finish, Tom. Mm -hmm. And uh, furthermore, uh, if that was the case, he'd be willing to resign because someone else could step right in there. But we could still exempt him from that, uh, so that he could partake in it. I mean, this is um, we. If he is paid. He yep. cannot partake, even if, even if he would approve of doing, uh, ultimately ended up approving of doing away with his own job. Mm -hmm. That consideration is something that directly affects his financial contract with the town, and he has to recuse himself from that. Either that or resign the position and let another one resign who's ready pre prepared to resign run a rescue squad, which is not going to be very much longer in lifespan anyway, so nobody cares. If if he were to resign the position right. a, a, as as um, as rescue squad right. head, right. then there would be no financial contract mm -hmm. involved and he would be just like you right. He wouldn't have a, a paid position with the mm -hmm. town and the um, the conflict would go away. Yeah. So there's really no big deal that can't be solved effortlessly. This is not, there's no well, conflict at this particular time and things done right and proper forms signed and the right steps taken after, there'll be no conflict afterwards if in, if the event occurs where he should be elected. Right, and I, I, I'm, yes, what I'm saying is this. If he is elected, right, we would, we would have the, there would be two steps if he were to retain right. the job. Two two key steps. Right. One, the board of the remaining members right. of the board of selectmen right. would have to vote to approve his continued activity. Mm -hmm. Two, he would have to recuse himself from any, regardless of how he felt about it mm -hmm. or in, anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he would have to recuse himself from anything that would have an impact on his quote-unquote financial contract, which is mm -hmm. the, the, the compensation. Mm -hmm. So that would include uh, the restructuring. Mm -hmm. um, so even if we we cannot exempt him from the recusal, we can approve, um, you know, we, we can approve the continuation of the job if we believe that it's possible uh, to conduct his business in, you know, in such oh, a way yeah. as right. the conflict wouldn't arise. All easily doable, right? Uh, this is not an act of Congress. This is pretty straightforward. I think, as I say, yeah. it's just there. It's pretty simple, isn't it? Uh, it is what it is. It is, it is what, what it is. is. That right. 
Yeah. And um, yeah. are you saying his intention is to resign as rescue? I'm not saying that. Okay. I'm not saying anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, I mean, I will put the cards on the table and say that um, I would not vote in favor of an exception because of the fact that this is one of the main things we're going to be looking at in the sort of next two or three years as a board of selectmen is the restructuring of public safety. He's had a history of it. In order to vote for that kind of exception, you have to have a reasonable belief that somebody can, you know, sort of stay out of the fray on that. And my feeling is that that would be extremely difficult. There will be lots of people looking at this issue, and it would be basically suggesting that somebody yeah. play well, with matches. Well, there's still no problem, because if he resigned, let's say he resigned, that would solve it. That that right. that that right. would put him that would put him as they say on the right. same basis right. as the rest of us. Someone yep. like the fire engineers, the disinterested party, are going to take part in those discussions. Um, correct. Yeah. Uh, again, he can he could take if he were yeah. if he isn't elected selectman, he can take part in those discussions as rescue chief because he's not in that position. Right, and if of he oversight. is elected selectman and he resigns as rescue chief, he can still partake in it. Then he can partake. Right. That's correct. Right. Mm -hmm. um, That's right. While we're on the discussion, I haven't looked at them, but I've located about 12 or 15 positions in town that need to file. Every one of these positions, there is an exemption for towns less than 3,500 because the intent of the legislature is that small towns you know, there's right. a small percentage of doers in these towns. That's right. And um, some some of us are and some of us aren't. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, any holds four positions. There's only one other person in town that does four things. That's right. Does them well. And um, I think as long as you're on this, we should send a letter probably out generally to all public employees and it should start out with uh, profusely thanking them for their dedication and hard work that they do, mm -hmm. so there's no misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. And accept the fact for this misunderstanding, I think it falls more on the selectmen who should know this rather than people we appoint to a conservation commission who also may serve on a, on a cemetery commission or something like that. So we really, if this is important, and you seem to think it is, uh, then I think we should all those people talk to paid, all these people paid positions yeah even if they're not paid they have they to should, file they certain files file something absolutely. with the clerk and uh, some of the positions uh, there's there's other ways of solving it as suggested in the letter as I read it anyway if we make certain positions accept so there's a couple of ways of going about it but if we're sitting here right now I am in violation of the law Mm -hmm. I have not filed, mm -hmm. and you have not granted me an exemption, first of all, for being a selectman and being on the Conservation Commission and being on the Cemetery Commission, mm -hmm. and we need to do that. And yeah, but you uh, were on Conservation Commission beforehand. Yeah, we should definitely look at that. I think it was an eye-opener to me, and I think it was good that we got the opinion, because I think that the opinion indicates yeah. that we have to do some paperwork that we may not have been doing. Well, it's... it's um, you're right, but a simple call to the Ethics Commission would have resolved in your mind what there was anyway, Tom. I think, frankly, it was made into a big brouhaha when it was really straightforward and easily resolvable and uh, became kind of a political football, frankly. And well, as I, I, th as I, I said before, there's a difference between politics and doing what the administration well, requires. I mean, and one of the things that is required is that you get an opinion yeah. of counsel in these situations we wanted to know what it was, what the facts of it were. I didn't know what the facts of it were. Nobody here knew what the facts of it were. And having the council, now we have the answers and know what the facts are. You should have looked into it when I got elected selectman too. It's actually yeah. uh, incumbent upon the person taking the office to do the filing. But oh, th there's no point. You know, none of us, none of us was fully aware yeah, of it. The problem is there is no problem. That's cool. No, the problem is there's an ethics rule. You have to do filings in the event, in the event that, for instance, you continue to have a paid job and no, you're involved in discussions. It is a problem. problem. It it's is a not a problem. It's a criminal offense. Not right so now. So that's why we need to know the rules. 
And that's what we found out. And it's absolutely vital that we do this. You, you point out yourself, we didn't know some of the things to do. This is the first time that we have had a selectman with this range of paid positions, and it was, I think, extraordinarily sensible to figure out what it was, what we had to well, do. Well, the bottom line because is, it's very easily resolvable, problem. isn't it, Tom? It's very easily it, resolvable. There's no problem. I indicated what needs to be right, done. Right. Okay. And if what is done is done, right. Right. it's done. Are we done? It's yeah, so we can go to this alcohol here. A little Cal Rovish sort of a taste of this, and uh, I just thought we should. Okay, have that I would out. like to reopen the continued meeting from a while <laughs> ago for the um, alcohol hearing for Verk Berlin Gulf. Thank you. It's good to see you all again. Nice to see you. <laughs> If I may, a couple of things I would like to uh, hand out to you. Mm -hmm. The first is a, a deed um, to the abutting property, the property to the west of our station. Mm -hmm. And as you can see from the deed, in December of 2013, Cumberland Farms acquired that parcel. We actually had a discussion with Cumberland Farms the middle part of December of 2013 while they were negotiating to purchase that parcel about continuing uh, some parking we had been doing with the owner at that time on that parcel once Cumberland Farms acquired title to the parcel. Once they acquired title in January of 2014, that's my only copy, Cumberland Farms amended the lease with my client to give my client the right to park in and the obligation to maintain the space next door to the west of our station. So what we've done is we've looked at um, a plan, and I'm sorry, this is the only copy I have. I thought I had more copies, mm -hmm. I apologize. But, make some um, it might be beneficial, that's part of it. Okay. Well, those copies being made, um, we tried to take a look at some of the concerns expressed, principal being about traffic coming from east to west. And because on that side of Route 62 is a single lane, as opposed to the west to east, there's two lanes. So what we tried to do with this plan is to um, make it easier to come into the service station to kind of go through and park around to prevent stacking up going from east to west inside the station. And we think the plan we have here um, indicates that we've satisfied um, um, or partially satisfied at least that situation that arose about that flow of traffic in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we picture the plan. Yeah, uh, that's what they're making there. Okay, Has this you. been submitted to the planning board for them to look at? No, this is this is a not a change of our, our plan, just the, the right to use additional parking space, uh, which had actually been used by my clients prior to Cumberland Farms acquiring that property. The uh, property shows, looking at this on the left-hand side, there are buildings to the back and the front is open. What we propose on doing is, where the arrow is in that picture, is existing parking space. We're talking about removing that existing parking space so that cars coming from east to west can drive through and use that area um, and not, as I say, stack up on Route 62. Now, I went by there the other day and this existing building in the back here appears to be a business. Uh, it looked like a car repair or, and it looked like that was their driveway. Am I off on thinking that? Yes, uh, it is a repair yeah. business. Yeah. So Cumberland Farms owns that site. Cumberland Farms Golf our landlord owns that site. Okay. And my understanding is that they've leased that person that's always been in there, that property. Mm -hmm. uh, just that space right there. He doesn't have access, I don't think, to the lot. I mean, he could get to the lot that way. 
Well, it looked kind of like it was a driveway. So that's, that's where his garage. Yeah, his garage driveway into his garage. Have, yeah, Show that's me on that map there where the traffic's coming in. It's coming in here, entering in here. Here, you can yell well, it. It's coming in this direction through here. Oh, through here. And the idea right, is to throw okay. in front of the building. You're going to do away with all of this? Yeah. Well, we still have those spaces there. Okay. But it's kind of a tough churn yeah. coming in to go yeah. to those spaces. So we envision coming through here around the cross <coughs> in front of the building and parking in this lot here. And that was our you know, proposed solution to relieve any uh, backup that may occur on 62. You're going to do away with these parking now. spots or leave them? Um, we'd like to leave them. Um, so you're pulling right in front of the building to get to the this other parking. parking. Spaces, so you got to get around the gas pumps. And if anybody's there. Walking in to get a candy bar. Yeah. yeah. And then you have this little section here where you can mm -hmm. get over there. Yeah. If the people, if these spaces here were used by people coming in, they're pulling in directly. Whereas coming here, it's a tough turn coming those spaces. So we think really that we've provided easier parking for people coming in an easterly direction. This is more or less a planning board issue. It's, I mean, I, I don't know that much about how you organize uh, parking mm -hmm. and planning. I mean, is, there, is this subject to site plan review or anything? Uh, our feeling is we're not changing the size of the building. We're using the area that was used for parking. Um, it was with a prior owner, now with a current owner, Cumberland Farms. And it's um, meant to address and provide some additional on-site parking to relieve concerns the board had and at one point the police chief uh, expressed as well. So we thought this was a, a solution to indicate that we do have more on-site parking we have improved the situation. The second part, just leaving that for a second, of mm -hmm. the handout that I, I just gave to you that's a yellow line, um, we were talking about what the impact would be to this site of adding beer and wine sales to the convenience store sales. Mm -hmm. And I had talked about uh, perhaps getting information from Virk's other sites. Well. They have three locations in Massachusetts that have beer and wine license. Two they purchased with the beer and wine licenses in place. Mm -hmm. So the only real example to give the board tonight is the Pembroke location. <coughs> and when the license was added, you can see the change from 2011 to 2012. A thousand maybe or less additional people coming in the store over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. If you carry that forward to 2013, it's about the same thing. In fact, a small decrease. So I think what we're showing is that we're not attracting new people. What we're doing really is, once we get our customer in the store, we're trying to increase the number of purchases that he or she makes in the building. By offering beer and wine, we increase that as an option for the consumer coming into the building. So we're not drawing more traffic into the area. We're using people already coming in to offer them new purchase opportunities to increase our sales in that respect. So it's unusual in that you know sales will increase as far as dollar volume, but the number of transactions actually are basically the same in this Pembroke location over the course of this two-year period. Okay. Once again, um, we are making no change in the interior of the building as far as the square footage is concerned. Mm -hmm. We're talking about changing display cases and displaying beer and wine uh, in the same fashion as goods were displayed in the site currently. Another concern that we had had um, <coughs> expressed by the fire chief was with having an employee dedicated to control of the pumping of gasoline and the collecting of cash for the sales of gasoline. Uh, he'd observed in the past that we had one person at the register and not two. We met with the fire chief, and I believe he sent you an amended letter. Uh, I kind of looked at our, our peak times and said, uh, during peak times, can we agree, we certainly agree, that we need to have two people in the building, one dedicated to fuel sales and one handling the other sales in the business. But during the non-peak hours, uh, we felt it was sufficient to have one person handling both tasks. And I think looking at our times of sales and peak times that at certain times during the day you don't need two people on site, one suffices. And I believe that the fire chief was satisfied 
that he could um, <coughs> agree with that proposition and not insist upon a dedicated person working the register <coughs> for the sale of gasoline. What, what hours would that dedicated person be there? Could you help me out with the hours that we talked about? Losing your letter? Yeah, I think it's in the five sheets. Uh, yeah. What he recommended. We said we'd do what he well, recommended. He said, he said in here during peak well, hours of operation. I don't know. Yeah, we specified 6.30 to, during 6 to 10 a.m. and 12 o'clock to 4 p.m. Those were our peak hours. So, so someone, during those hours, someone, someone takes two hours off in the middle and then comes back. Is that how that works? Yeah. Um, well, basically, the, there'll be a person there all the time. Right. But they'll make sure there's two there. <laughs> and that person may go to different duties, yeah, restocking, so. management functions, whatever. Typically, the store manager is at the site from eight to five. Better, but now we'll also, during those seven, hours, have a dedicated yes. register okay. person. So if that's two people on the register plus the store manager. Okay. And you're right, the chief's letter does attach your letter describing those hours. Yep. Okay. We also um, have had some conversations um, with the police chief who's here tonight. I won't speak for him, but I think we've addressed most of the concerns he's raised in his letter. I'll let him speak to those. Um, reminding you, we had letters from the building inspector when this first started. He had no objection to the granting of a license for this location and from the DPW head, indicating he had no objection to granting the license to this area. Mm -hmm. So we feel as if um, we have hopefully addressed all of the concerns voiced by the board, voiced by the fire chief, the police chief, and hopefully have created a, um, built a case for the board to grant a license to my client at this location for the sale of beer and wine. Any questions you have, we'll do our best to address them. Mm -hmm. I would like to have the police chief. Um, as you, as the board asked, uh, <coughs> in October, um, October. I, yeah. I spoke with um, representatives of the Linfield, Pembroke, and Plymouth Police Departments um, because we all, I think, had some concerns about liquor sales. Um, and to be quite honest, I was very surprised at, at the response. Um, they had zero complaints. Um, and not only did they have no complaints, but they talked about uh, FERC as an incredible community partner and things that they've done uh, in helping them with some, some law enforcement programs and cops and shops and things like that. Um, so all, all my concerns around that, and I, I think I mentioned in my original letter, um, tips training, things like that, and these are things that, that FERC actually does for other businesses themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of those concerns have been alleviated. Um, yeah, you know, I, I do see that there's been some work done to try and alleviate traffic. Um, that area and, and that site are, are just, I think, always going to be a concern for traffic. Um, I was just looking at some quick reports today, and um, either on the site or in front of the site, um, you know, we, we've investigated 25 crashes in a three-year period. Um, you know, for, for a parking lot, that's a lot. Um, and, and I don't know, without seeing it function, what's going to happen with the proposed changes. Um, and, and that would still be my concern, the traffic on, on Route 62 um, and, and entering. I don't think there'd be a problem now with, with vehicles stacking to get in, but it would just be management within the lot and, and what that would lead to. And um, what was the Cabela. estimates on traffic coming in once Cabela's down? Um, well, the Cabela's there? itself, um, they're looking at about a million customers per year. Um, that's just Cabela's. On there, mostly um, probably coming off 495. I would say the majority the coming off of 495. Um, and, and then you're going to add in all the other businesses. Right. Um, so there's going to be quite a bit um, of additional traffic in that area. Yep. And you've, you've done 25 crashes in three years, three. which is quite a bit for. That, that's quite for one, and, and that's either in front of or actually in the lot. We've, we've responded quite a bit to, to crashes in the lot itself. So it's I, I have to say, that lot is in terrible shape because I tried pulling out and it's got a huge divot in the front. Plus, this business still looks like it's using it as a driveway. So instead of just having two entrances and exits, you now have three. I mean, I would have felt- how much business that business does um, for use of that driveway. Well, it's just, just that it doesn't look like it's parking in this section. Mm. It looks more like it's used as a, a an egress to this business back here. Right. So my client does not have the exclusive right to pass and repass over there. 
the right to park there. It's a non-exclusive right. It is not exclusive. Yeah. Okay. It is not exclusive. Mm -hmm. Looking at the, the traffic concerns, um, most of the construction up on the hill is, is um, in Hudson and not Berlin. So most of the permits have come from Hudson and I think, not I Berlin. think actually it's more Berlin than Hudson. Yeah, it is? Okay. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. It's ultimately, it's Berlin. Yes. Okay. Cabela's yeah. is Berlin. And, okay, um, have there been traffic studies, do you know, Chief, done? Um, oh, yeah. What was done prior yeah. to my arrival? I mean, that was my, that's under the purview planning board, but yes, there have been. My experience has been, I know nothing about the Berlin situation, that in those situations, um, the traffic study deals with the maximum impact on traffic given full development of the parcel. So when they permitted each building, they looked not only to what that building would add, but full build out of that parcel up there. That's and if, right. in fact, those permits were granted, then Route 62 had the ability to handle the additional traffic generated by full development of that parcel. Yeah, obviously, in theory, and the, the studies are there, the, the practically, and we've had difficulties with the state on this, that the combination of uh, the road coming in across from your place, your mm -hmm. place, and the added, you know, the added traffic, adding just sort of more units, more complexity, you know, of, of flow. It's it's a problem area, and I don't think it's an area that pragmatically we've gotten sorted out yet. Mm -hmm. um, the original plan did have a light at Gates Pond. Well, we had we had proposed that the state has not approved. You know, was it sufficient traffic count to generate light? Um, I think location? they thought it was going to back up. Didn't they? Yeah, I mean, there's some concerns, and this is just what I've gotten from yeah. the planning board concerns about the the design of the off ramps and you know, how that would flow into a traffic light and yeah. be a larger redevelopment that would have to occur. Yeah, um, we've had in Hudson similar situations with the extension from um, 185. Uh, and 290 coming in and that intersection being developed in the last few years. And um, I think there's been a relearning experience. I think as people get to use the area, they begin to understand what the track requirements are, where cars stop and start. And um, that generally results in a better use and flow of traffic for the area. I think we, we may see the same learning curve on 62 by this project over time. But certainly the capacity of the roadways is sufficient to cover the traffic being generated by the users in the area. And yes, I would, say, I, I would also point out that you indicated that uh, uh, the number of, uh, of transactions had not been increased by right. adding this. And of course that is, I think, relevant to this because transactions closely correlate traffic to, to traffic. So, you know, that, that we, I certainly did take notice of that point. You um, do need to stop tractor trailers from parking out in the road in front of it when they don't have any place to pull in. Sometimes they park out on 62 mm -hmm. to go in. Yeah. Which would I mean, they're the I, I don't think there's, it, 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 to me, it's undeniable that that. To me, it's undeniable that that lot is very tightly constrained for the use that you have. Um, I mean, I've gone in there, and it, it you know, it's, it's, it's different. Sometimes I don't go in there because it's tight. You know, I'll go somewhere else just because it's tight, and you know, I don't want to have to uh, pay you know huge attention and wait you know for two or three people to get out of my way to you know to to. Uh, to, to leave the site. So I think that's you quite well that's taken. For sure. to be a convenience operation and convenience also yeah, yeah. means access yeah, yeah, to yeah, the premises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, no. I think that's, no. that's, that's undeniable. It's also in a, in an area that I, you know, frankly think is, has not been sorted out optimally, you know, for traffic. However, having said that, I'm also having a hard time on the basis of what we've seen now, and, and it was a question I certainly had at the beginning, uh, I'm having a hard time seeing that adding the you know, relatively modest amount of, of racks for uh, alcohol is going to make any difference in terms of 
those problems. You know, so I, I just see it as not relevant to those those problems. And I do. I mean, you know, I do recognize that there is now some a formalization of, uh, you know, of 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 the added uh, of the added parking. So I guess you know, I'm I'm having a hard time seeing all those problems. I'm still having a hard time how the the liquor license is going to make a difference. I <clears throat> keep you know I've heard complaints about the congestion and the problems down there, getting in and out of this and trucks parked and everything else right along. But since Cabela's, since this came up, and people are aware of the um, beer and wine, again, maybe they haven't thought it through, but you know, all I hear is we don't need any more incentive, more traffic down there. Uh, if you get the Cabela's traffic, my guess is a lot will be stopping in, picking up a six pack, or picking up some wine on the way out. Um, I'm part of that crowd, so I don't, uh, you know, that could happen, and, and I, I mean, frankly, uh, I just assume, when, when is Cabela's going online? Wait until it's online, see what the traffic is, wait a year on this. I, I'm not going to, I won't be supporting this at least until most of those stores are up and running and we see what the traffic flow is like, and then I come back again and think it'll handle it fine, but uh, at this particular point, I can't see it. I have to agree with Walter. Well, I would I strongly object to that. If I can just suggest, I mean, we're in business. We've been in business for a long time. Uh, we've been a part of the Berlin community, mm -hmm. and we're now taking a back seat to someone coming in and building a new business. I think it's they that have to deal with the situation. We've been there. We're not increasing the traffic flow to our location. Mm -hmm. Why are we taking a second seat behind them coming in? They should be behind us. We, we've been there. Yeah, but you, not, you, you did not, um, you came in and you're there and that's fine and there's been some problems and that's good. Now you want to change it a little bit and what I'm saying is the traffic that's apt to be coming out of there, including me, he's quite apt to stop in and, and uh, pick up a six pack or something on the way home. And I just think that we should wait until um, the development's up there. I feel very strongly about it. I don't think well, it's going to put you again. Mr. Vick, we have, we've we submitted some figures to indicate that there won't be an increase in transactions. That's not been the history at the Pembroke location. Mm -hmm. But has the Pembroke location got a business that's expecting to have a million cars go by in a year? Once again, whatever traffic is going by there, there's been traffic studies and that traffic has been approved for them to get their permits. Well, I'm saying you're so. going to have a lot more traffic with a lot more possibilities for people mm -hmm. to go in. I don't know what your Pembroke site, but this site is going to experience a huge amount of traffic increase. And that's why I agree with Walter. Wait a year and see see how it goes. If if we're not having huge traffic problems up there, I would I would give this a second thought, but at this point, I just think it's too, there's too many unknowns except that we're going to be having a lot of car traffic. Look, but looking at our peak times versus, for example, the users up in the plaza, I mean, I don't think we're talking about the morning peak period being a problem with traffic for the plaza users. I think our late afternoon peak traffic is not a problem. So I think we merge very well with the use, as far as time of day is concerned, of the traffic coming along 62. Uh, we're not adding to the peak time traffics that the mall is, is living on. We're, we're a different user looking at traffic at different times. I'd ask the board, you know, consider that and look at the fact that we're, we're not looking at the dinner hour going up there. We're not looking at adding traffic at those times. We're looking at our traffic, our peak periods being at a different time. And I would suggest that the impact of our traffic is minimal on 62 compared with the other traffic users. So you're saying that your peak peak time for people to buy alcohol would be in the morning? Well, I'm, just the, I'm saying that the peak times for the businesses up at the commons, mm -hmm. okay, would be at nighttime with the restaurants and with BJ's and with the other users up there. Not so much during the day. You haven't been Our, up there. Uh, <laughs> during the day, I, well, then. Every day. <laughs> yeah, well, every day. But, I, I visualize it that way. I visualize that our peak times are not the same as their peak times. They offset each other. 
I think it's a fact you have to look at in deciding whether or not this will cause problems. And certainly, you know, if you if you grant it and find there are issues, you have a right to have a rehearing when the license is up for renewal. It's pretty hard to when somebody's changed the store over and, and got products coming in and everything else, then tell them to shut down or something. I, I don't see, you know, a year's delay. When, when is Cabela's coming online now? They're already building. They're, yeah. This. I thought it was going to be June of next year. They have no, so I thought they, yeah, I thought they were thinking early spring. And that's what that website said, mm -hmm. but I don't think they really know yet. So this. I, Sometime um, mid-year mid next year, we would expect. I'm not saying no forever, but I, I frankly just uh, thought about this and the people that have talked to me about it, and my own sense of it, and you know, like Tom, I've gone in there and actually driven out again. And uh, I just, uh, at this point, cannot in good faith just go at this point. It may be a come time in the future, but can't do it. May I make a yeah. motion then? Mm -hmm. And my client just uh, speak at something before? Of course. Thank well, you. I mean, once we have a motion on the break, we'll talk. But. Okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. So, Leo Barcoloni, I own mm -hmm. the location there, and I, I do appreciate uh, all the development. It's uh, There is a lot of traffic there now, I agree. Uh, when I took over the location uh, a dozen years ago, there was no Cabela's or there was no BJ's or anything else and we used to sell on average about hundred and forty thousand gallons a month and then BJ's came in and we're now down to under a hundred thousand gallons a month so there may be more traffic unfortunately we didn't benefit um, I think the board also decided in their their wisdom to to grant a license to BJ's who came in and you know I think if a customer is looking for a party or they have, they're going to have a football game event or they're having a social thing, they'll go to BJ's and they'll buy their beer and wine uh, because they're gonna price it a lot better than I'm gonna price it. And they're gonna have much greater selection. I think, um, you know, looking at our planogram, you know, we have 12 cooler doors. We'll have three cooler doors with, with six packs and 12 packs of beer. Our customer is not the one who's gonna be out there looking for a good price or volume. Uh, you know, the one who's going to make a destination. Ours is, like Paul said, the customer who's on his way home from work and wants a six-pack to watch the Bruins hockey game tonight. That's our typical customer. And, and in the scheme of things, it will probably be as a category, and I could give you the categories of what we sell in, in Pembroke and in Plymouth and Linfield, but it's probably about 8% uh, of our business is that. Um, so we, we, you know, it's an added thing. It, it you know, the, the town in its wisdom had a license available, actually at two, but then BJ took one and we just felt that, you know, we have a right to run other stores. We run other stores with beer and wines and this would just kind of fit in and, and help the store there in general. Um, the last comment I want to make on, on, um, on the gasoline, because I think your concern's valid is, you know, this passing lane. Well, 80% um, of people who buy gasoline uh, just buy gas and leave. So they typically, 80% uh, of them will come in, they pay out at the pumps, they don't even go inside. We're, we're probably uh, uh, at that store like 90% credit card. High, high volume credit card, debit card. So they don't, they don't come in. So what this allows is it allows, we have a pass through lane. So this is where our fire lane is. So this is where customers can't park so that if there ever was anything, this is where the fire trucks would come, whatever. So that's an open lane to begin with. And, and I agree with this, this lot is in really tough shape and it's in tough shape because we haven't put any money into it because we were waiting to see how the best way to use this is in, in conjunction with the rest of the property. So uh, we do feel there'll be a marked, uh, significant improvement in, in traffic flow because now you'll, that having the third exit is now you can have three, three different ways people to leave if they want to and we'll have additional parking over there. But, um, you know, I do think, you know, having been a Berlin uh, business for all these years and having seen the development up there, and believe me, I, I appreciate it to some degree, you know, that um, all of those things, you talk about Carbellas and those things were, have happened, you know, way after our, our involvement. And I don't know if, if in their permitting they haven't even talked about us and what we were doing, more of what they were doing, so. Uh, just want to again I appreciate the opportunity to be a business person in Berlin we're happy we're here and 
we are successful here, but uh, uh, you know, feeling the scheme of things, it's not going to be, uh, you know, we're not going to be drawing in additional customers that's serving the ones we have. I um, hear, heard everything you say, and I appreciate it. I particularly uh, appreciate what the chief of police have a great deal of faith in. He's done some research, and there's no question that Burke is a good neighbor, and the communities like to have you around or work with you in that community. But in this particular spot, I mean, just in my sense, driving intuitively driving through there, something something isn't right in there. We need more lights or a traffic circle or something. And, and I guess I have to. I would have to move at this time that we not grant the um, with the license, the beer and wine license to Burke Enterprises at this time. I will second that. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Do I hear a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 So that means that the license is denied. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Do you need a copy of all this? Uh, I'll take it. You want me to just put it in? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. I'll put it in. Thank you. <coughs> When the mall was designed, Highland Commons, that street was designed to suit that mall and the traffic and is complete right now. There's no plans to change it. That's all the hand that. And at this time, it just, you know, it doesn't seem to be the best situation. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, again, there were some yeah. alternatives that were considered subject to state right. approval, but the state hasn't approved them. So it actually what was initially suggested was not fully realized, yeah. but okay. it well, is what it is right now. Yeah. yeah. I think if they had, I can give you this. If they had taken that and ma got a plan, went to the planning board, yeah. and had them look at it, mm -hmm. but it just looks like you know. Yeah, it's pretty. Scary. There's three entrances now. Yeah. yeah. And right. as I said, if you've driven in that gravel lot, it's. It's tough, and, and that other business is using it as a driveway, too. Nobody likes to dash somebody's hopes, but I mean, somebody, you know, you just gotta <laughs> use your judgment sometimes. Uh, all right. Um, we have consideration of Dennis Bartlett requests for small town ethics commission exemption. I didn't know what this meant either. Pursuant to a discussion he had with the Mass State Ethics, I request the Board of Selectmen to approve my exemption or my interest from Mass General Law 268A Section 20, which is a small town exemption as confirmed by the Ethics Commission on April 25th. So Rescue Chief is paid, EMD is paid, Town Barn Committee uncompensated, CBA uncomp, and Insurance Advisory Committee. You know, until we better understand this chapter 268A, unless one of you can explain it very easily. Um, I've read it through a number of times. I'm convinced that I and a number of other people in this town need to do some filing with somebody according to the mm -hmm. statute. Mm -hmm. I haven't quite figured it out myself. Um, and again, once we figure it out, Unless you know it off the top of your head, Tom. Well, I mean, I've, I've, I've read, you know, I've read the, you know, I've read the opinion, um, and I've done it 20 times, I think. <laughs> well, I read it more than once, Walt. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, um, this, this, this approval is for an approval of him serving in these capacities alone now. now because if you look none of these none of these overseas determines the policies for whatever right. yeah. so that's what uh, that's what this is now the selectmen have appointed him to each of each of these positions, unlike some of the other positions. So 
I would suggest that the fact that we appointed him to these positions and reappoint them to his positions, it can be reasonably inferred that we approve That's what of, I of the positions. Right, right. However, council said that in terms of having an appropriate file on this, that there should be, you know, a, an, an actual approval under under the ethics, just right. as a matter of administration. I think substantively, we we have appointed him to all all four of these things. That's my feeling. And we, yeah. uh, but I do not. I certainly don't see any harm in approving these as they are. As I'd indicated before, once he becomes elected, as it says in the opinion, then it becomes a different situation. It requires a right. uh, another vote because now he's in a position <coughs> where he oversees some of these positions. So. That's that's what that's what it is, and it really I, I think, council agrees. It's it's an administrative step, yeah. so the file's there. If there's any kind of question, mm -hmm. um, we have obviously approved his service in his right. positions previously. So I certainly don't have a problem with um, uh, you know doing as Denny has requested here, and 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 vote, you know, an approval, as I say, just to formalize what we have already done before. Well, then make a motion. Um, should, okay, then we can discuss a little more. That's good. Oh, I, you want to do it? Sure. You make a motion? Sure. Um, I would, I would make a motion that um, the Board of Selectmen confirm its approval of the service of Dennis Bartlett as Rescue Chief Emergency Management Director. Town Barn Committee, ZBA, and Insurance Advisory Committee, including the fact that he will be paid with respect to his services as Rescue Chief and EMD, all as set forth in his request. Do, do the terms special community and special town employed community? That's not what we're doing here. We're just, we are just approving those. his exemption from the interest as long as it's <coughs> only those positions second half uh, <clears throat> what what is the now how would you look at um, somebody working as an elected official in a commission and then as an employee of that commission getting paid out that of would the commission uh, that that I believe would require approval you I know, mean when I read this I thought we need to, you know, when the dust is settled on this, we need to probably put together a matrix that says if you, if you were this, right. you have to do this. Right. If you are this, you would have to right. do this. I, I would have expected the town council to give us a little better matrix, but that's right, because this is fine, but we don't want to do this piecemeal. We should address uh, and almost look at every position and uh, I agree. And again, agree with it. There, there are, are gradations of issues, and it's more important if somebody has multiple paid positions, because that brings in the element of having a financial contract you know, with the town. If they're solely volunteer positions, it's, it's, a, you know, it's frankly, it's a lower level of concern as yeah. I've understood. And I've really read this stuff and gotten into it only in the last week or so, so. Right, they have so it was completely unknown. Yeah, right. Yeah. Did I have a second on this motion? I thought I seconded it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Now tell me, you've seen out your bread. What should I file? What do I need to file? I think that you before should file. Get before the chief class <laughs> and, uh, You did not vote. You did vote? Yeah. Yes, okay. we Three voted. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think it's it's too late. He's got Is it too late? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're in my office. Um, Meet me downstairs. My, <laughs> yeah, my, my, oh, you got to get it. <laughs> um, uh, I think that. Uh, not drawing salary. Um, no, you're not drawing salary. But no, I mean, I think that uh, you would not have to file this. I just think you have. To, I think we would just have to approve your service. But there is no. There's no financial interest, so it'd be slightly differently worded. Right. You don't get paid for conservation, do you? No. No, none of the others I paid as a selectman. Yeah. Huh. It's a paid position. Yeah. yeah, I think we do have to do a matrix because, again, because uh, selectmen ap ap 
appoint right. the conservation commission, <clears throat> uh, we we should do we should do a matrix, okay. um, and um, we can you know we can talk to council or one of us can take a shot at it. Not in the next week or so, but you know when I could certainly um, try to take a shot at it, and then. Uh, I'm actually surprised that, uh, and, and they don't, because I checked. I'm sort of surprised that the uh, the ethics commission doesn't have like a chart that says if you're this, this, if you're that, that. But so most of these laws were passed in the mid to late '70s, after the big blue ribbon commission and all the green yeah, yeah, yeah. fraud and UMass parking garage falling down before it was had a car no, and right. all that stuff. And that's right. Every one of us legislators, uh, you couldn't vote against it. So, Some of them so you, forced, you so wait a minute, it. wait a minute, you voted for this thing? <laughs> well, I that we'll talk about that later. But I there was a raft of that foolishness. There was a raft of that foolishness. I'm sure there was. I'm sure it. there was. Yeah. Okay. But yes, I, I, you know, again, I think the the, the crucial things are where, you know, where there's a real, where there's a financial interest involved and I think we identified those uh, and then we should look at, uh, at at papering up the various approvals with, with all deliberate speed but let's get through town meeting and so on okay we done we, I think so okay we have a review of Mark Coolidge's letter to the selectmen seeking records and chief Galvin's response is this anything that uh, that should be done in the executive session. I have no idea. I, I don't think so. It's just a request. It's a request for information. Just a public request. Yeah. Okay. I just. Yeah. I, I thought it was kind right. of a vague request when I read it. I didn't but, and, yeah, it seems to be alluding to maybe a secret file or something. And you know, I had a folder that um, in one of the file cabinets that Chief Road had left about some other requests that Mr. Coolidge had made, and that's all I have. Uh, we actually provided him with some police reports. About two weeks ago, that he had requested. Um, Has he received all public records from the as far as as far as I know? Um, but this is a copy of what was in the file, which are some of the letters that he had written, um, as well as I think they might have, and some of the letters that he written had written to the district. And this is office. very specific. This is actually narratives and reports that the former chief left for you. Yeah. And, and the are only, there any? No. The just this file. So there was nothing other than and that. And that file has already been provided. As, as far as you know, most of it's correspondence that he had, you know, he had submitted to us. Mm -hmm. um, and then the police reports that are in there, he has already received. Mm -hmm. Okay. So has he received everything that's in that file at this point? Uh, I haven't sent your response, but. Yeah, pretty. He already got that stuff before. No, I didn't give him that stuff. But he's I mean, mo done. most of it, like the police reports he's gotten before, and I think the letters that are in there are letters that he had drafted, and there might be one that's from Chief Rhodes look at it? To, the, to the board. So that's um, the, that paper clipped. Yeah, and this, this was a letter that uh, Mr. Coolidge wrote. These were the, just the police reports. Mm -hmm. um, this was a letter to Mr. Coolidge. This was a letter from Chief Rhodes to the Slackman. This was from, this was to Chief Rhodes from Mark Coolidge. Yeah, this was from uh, Chief Rhodes again to the board, and then these are just what the copies the of the police reports. Okay. So, then I think those are all public records. Yeah. So and I think that they, he should have a copy of them. can have this, but there's nothing. Yeah. If, if there were other things that That's Chief Road had had in the yeah, past, I yeah. don't think there is anything. I had a conversation with uh, a representative of the district attorney's office a few weeks ago, and that's when I provided Mr. Uh, okay. Cool as the other reports. So, okay. I don't I just know. I to show you, and then I'm going to give them to him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to look through it? Uh, yeah. Okay, dokie. Okay. That's it. All right. Tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more on, correct? Yeah, I think it is. So, eight. Yeah, eight will do. Okay. It's a little before. Yeah, so I come by yeah. to talk to you. At yeah. Quarter. Okay. Perfect. To eight. Excellent. Okay, and then we'll oh, good night. meet with them at 8. Okay. Great. All right. All right. Okay, yeah. we're what on a, the miscellaneous correspondence. Okay. okay. Uh, we have way too much paper. 
Nope. What happened to a paperless society? We have a report from the town hall about events and peoples and income and their cash, income and cash expenses. We have the pre-disaster mitigation and flood mitigation assistance program announcement, which I presume was sent to Denny. Ported around, yep. And Keith, yep. We have, mm, let's see. MEMA, DPU notice about NSTAR Gas Company and Hopkinton LNG Gas Service Agreement, none of which we get. We have the Assabet Valley Annual Audit Report and Management Letter, okay. if anyone would like to read that. We have a letter from the Office of the Treasurer to Albert somebody or other in Farmington, um, Please be advised that the track two of the two-track auction you have scheduled for May 16th regarding William Carey and Jody Carey, 76 Ball Hill Road, has been given to the town of Berlin by decree of land court. If you have any questions, contact myself. <coughs> okay. We have, oh, from me, oh, this is the, um, the request for reserve fund transfer for the parts in the hallway, which we, we approved last week, but they didn't meet that they didn't meet that Wednesday, even though they had a posted meeting in the hallway. So, they, so, so they haven't approved it yet. They haven't approved it mm -hmm. yet. Okay. The heat will stay on. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, something from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, well, week, you, DCR grant. Oh, this is the pre-disaster pre mitigation flood assistance program. Mm -hmm. From the town accountant, a signature question. What is this about? If there's a failure to elect or a vacancy occurs in the office of selectmen, the remaining selectmen or uh, this is just oh. June and they approve the warrant well June was um, she it, was copied on the town council opinion and she just highlighted at the end that if there were a selectman with a conflict and it was that the other two selectmen would have to get their butts in here and sign it to sign yeah. the warrants which and, was what we've always done anyway mm, well right if Denny were not able to sign the warrants for being rescue chief. Oh, oh I require see. the other two selectmen to Design sign the that. warrants. Okay. So. Comstar bill. This was that whole thing about who gets billed. Comstar is still billing uh, the employee. Yeah. Is that an issue that's going to be, it's being resolved? He has, he has notified the company to stop billing so it should be resolved okay this is an update from chris senny about the <coughs> works but we just heard the update yeah, heard that, that, yeah. Yeah. and this is construction phase from matt senny which we just heard mm -hmm. this is uh a contract for a canon copier okay so you not you don't have to worry about it yet we already got your budget bill for this year but Cannon's giving the first shot across the bow that they soon will not be able to provide parts for the OSA copier that we have. So it works. We have a contract with them, but he's getting us ready for the idea of either another purchase or a lease. In the meantime, though, I asked him to turn that into a scanner, and uh, <coughs> Dan is working with Cannon. Dan's going to contact Cannon to try to make that happen. Well, to turn up that into a scanner? It is a scanner. It's already wired for it. Dan oh, okay. It. It's just mm -hmm. never been finished. So she doesn't have to do a sheet at a time. She can yeah. just put it in. Well, and everyone actually on this floor who does one sheet at a time scanning. It's a bulk scanner. Yeah. Okay. Two-sided. What? Where is our uh, one sheet scanner located? Um, to the right of my computer. Gotcha. Okay. I yep. know a little reorg in here today. Yep. A little change around. Honestly, I didn't notice, but I did notice you had a big girl chair. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Not the fire chief wrestled one from down the hallway for me. Good. We retired the other one. 
So there's a um, new officials finance forum on June 5th and Mary is asking if she could go to it. If you think that is... Uh, I've been to this twice. I've never been to this. Well, it, it, it's pretty interesting and it teaches you the basics of budgeting and Prop 2 and a half and all the stuff you need to know about town and finances. It's one day. What date? June, June 5th. 5th at the Hall at St. George in Worcester. Okay. I think it's $50. Yes. I think it's useful. We depend sure. upon you to read things and focus so on move. things and sort things out. So, yeah, good Second. idea. All in favor? Aye. 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 Cooperative Fund of New England, Department of Housing Community Development. Uh, this is the official letter that we had. Le we had the unofficial one last mm -hmm. week where they're planning on. No, I take Intend it back. Intend to foreclose. Intend no. to foreclose on Sawyer Hill. Yeah. 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 Um, community and Patriot run records. Yeah, this is just the, the um, they are getting faxed here now and they're kind of exposed. And so he's making contact with the companies to stop faxing and be able to run records here where they're not terribly secure. I mean, I'm here, but then I step out. Other yeah. people use the fax machine. So he's going to start having faxes go elsewhere. Can they be emailed? Emails? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would make more sense at this point. I'm sure the ambulance company has a multi page scanner. Yes, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure they do. Yeah. We have a memorandum, a notification to abutters from Lycott Environmental to the abutters of West Pond, 200 Crosby Road. They're going to do management of algae and vegetation. And I guess you've got a copy mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Um, data support from the tax collector. He says, I've become aware that there's some folks who may be confused as to what our data system support consists of. I plan to hold a forum on this in the near future. <coughs> I think there's still problems with email. Yeah, there are. I hear it from different offices on a daily basis, and it's really disruptive. Like, really disruptive. Okay. I had a non-charter related email problem today that was it's really destructive. It probably blew away a good quarter of my day. Did it, it get fixed? No, it's not fixed, despite three attempts to fix it. Oh, sorry, two attempts. A third will be made tomorrow. Okay. This is the software system on our... Oh, this is just Microsoft Office. Yeah. Whatever. Interesting. Okay. But usually it's charter-based problems. Mm -hmm. Keith has ongoing rampant problems with it, and he's basically working off of the charter cloud on his phone. He's not even working off of <coughs> not that work anymore. I guess nothing's dumping into Outlook for him, so he's not... Hmm. The people have lost emails. Cable access and cable advisory say that there's two years worth they, they don't have on the cloud anymore. That Charter doesn't know where it is. Diane says she has large gaps that's not on the cloud anymore. Hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah. That's a project. Uh, well, yeah, there's been a request for some kind of IT by committee just to get feedback from people or for there to be a formalized way for people to give feedback and have it be confirmed as received and that there's an action plan, maybe even a five-year plan that keeps just kind of like capital, but an IT thing that yeah. keeps up with everyone's needs. Okay. Okay. Collins Center report. Uh, the April 30th deadline, if you wanted an FY15 municipal performance manage program. This was a very big thing that Bruce sent that shows all the uh, stores that are going in at Highland Commons, Ulta, Lane Bryant, Dress Barn, Five Below, Party City, Carter's, Five Guys, Eastern Bank. Oh, here they are. Famous Footwear, Five Below, Party City, Carter's. I didn't even know what some of them are. DXL, Justice, Maurice's. All Joseph A. Bank. Like to drink wine and uh, beer, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Going to be a mob. Absolutely. Capella. 
Cabela's. And this is a whole memo about um, their street addresses. Okay. Insurance question. Oh, this was about the muster? Yeah. So pass it on, definitely. Are our call firefighters covered for injury <coughs> in a muster? Did you ever get an answer? Oh, yeah, I thought, thought I put the answer in there. Oh. The members of the fire department would be covered in a muster, but the women's team, if they're not members of the department, would not be covered in the event of a muster injury. So, yeah, really that's sort of what we thought we talked about. You should only be sanctioning teams that are comprised of town employees for them to be covered. I guess the others would go at their own risk. If that's not clear, right. though, that may not be clear to them. I don't know how you iron that out at the other end. I don't think that'll discourage any of them. No, just as long as it's not the presumption that they are being covered. Well, they're not in the they're not in their employee in any mm -hmm. way. They're participating in a sport, effectively. But they, I guess this team needs to provide an insurance, you know, a certificate of insurance to the event organizers. Oh, okay. So it's the opposite. You know what I mean? Like the event organizers now want to get these gotcha. from participating towns. Gotcha. So maybe do you field a team that includes non-covered members? Is there any kind of you know, implication? Well, the implication seems to be that they won't be covered by town insurance. Is, uh, <coughs> uh oh. It's trouble. It's still rolling. We're still rolling. We're it's still, still rolling. rolling. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You might want to ask if there was a possibility for a rider for, um, a temporary one day rider for muster day? Yeah. If you could ask, you could see. I mean, sometimes you can get a rider like that for 50 bucks or 100 bucks. And then, you know. The cost. Oh, okay. Yeah. We only have two more things, and then you can ask us what you, you, you go right ahead. Are you coming because you have an executive <coughs> session stuff for us, or just? Yeah, I have no good news. Let's go through the news. Share what I have. Okay. So no you want to do executive session okay. on the pilot? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. We'll finish this. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is from the Berlin Treasurer. There, a new response has been posted about leasing a fire truck. His question was. Has any other community leased fire or police vehicles? If so, who did you lease them from and what, if any, problems did you occur? And someone from Canton, the finance director in Canton, said they leased an E1 ladder truck from Federal Signal. As our truck broke down, it was a demonstrator model. <coughs> As we needed one right away, it was a lease purchase with no payments required until one year from acquisition. <clears throat> it worked well as it allowed us time to get a debt authorization vote from town meeting to pay for the truck in full. That sounds kind of backwards. Mm -hmm. Well, and then we have some PR material from um, Kinder Morgan, the gas pipeline people. So he came by today and he wanted to know how soon, what the dates were that he'd get in front of the selectmen and um, with their PR team. Their PR team wouldn't be able to come here until May 12th. Actually, May 12th is the date that he wouldn't. And if you meet on Mondays, May 19th would be the first. But he wasn't committing to any date, nor was I. He said that he was coming at our request. I said we hadn't really requested um, them to attend a meeting. But they're responding to the vote that you took to not allow access to the four town on parcels. Should we have a bigger room and let everybody know that? Uh, affected by it. I don't think we should just have it for us. It doesn't oh. have to be a Monday night. If you don't want it to be a Monday night, it could be another night. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people that are yeah. interested in this. Yeah. He's actually saying that Monday <coughs> nights are the worst for them. Monday nights are the when most town selectmen, and they're meeting with many boards of selectmen, if uh, Monday is the worst for them. Is that right? Yeah. You should post this up online again. This That's up on our website. Okay. Because it shows that there's already a pipeline coming out of Bolton into what looks like Clinton. I don't see why they just can't extend that one instead of putting in a new one. We'll ask them that question. Yeah. 
Okay. I know because they don't want it to run along Wachusett Reservoir where it could contaminate the Boston water. <laughs> okay, is there anything else before the board? In public session. In public session. Nope. I have nothing. Oh, I did. Oh, so I started the process of putting the police car on Municipid and I just needed this title, which I now have a copy of. Okay. So I'm probably going to ask Mary to post it or to request posting of it. And I think they recommend putting it up for auction for two weeks. Okay. 2005 Crown Victoria Municipid.com. All right. No reserve or? Well, I don't know. What are we going to do if no one buys it? I looked at the prices. Yeah. We'll Get see. The assessors. Uh, you can't have I'm a huge. I'm <laughs> All, right. All right. Do I hear oh, a motion to go into executive session? Uh, I move that we go into executive session. We will not be returning to uh, open Jill? session yeah. thereafter because we well, right, nobody has a yes, uh, second. All in favor? Andrew, aye. Andrew, aye. 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 Aye